Okay, so this is um, my video on our adventures of Ava being in the NICU. She was there for 16 days. Um, pretty much day one, she um, was down there right away instantly. And Daniel got to see her, I think, within 30 minutes of her being in there. And they did get pictures of him. One of the nurses was able to take pictures of Ava right after she was born because Daniel gave her our camera and then she took pictures of him seeing her for the first time which was one of the number one things I wanted I wanted to have my birth or the labor and stuff videotaped because I wanted to see his facial expressions when she came out because that was like one of the most important things to me was to see my husband's face when he first sees his daughter um, so it was really nice to have those pictures and stuff because they're really cute. Um, I think she knows I'm talking about her. Sweetie, your tooth goes in your nose, not your mouth. Goes in your nose. She likes to. She likes to pull her cannula out of her nose and put it in her mouth. She's always trying to eat it. Um, but anyway, so. I, I saw her for about 15 minutes or so. They took me back upstairs. Um, pretty much I did the first part of recovering from a C-section, getting cleaned up and um, everything like that. And then we went down to see her. I think it was, because um, I hadn't seen, I when I saw her it was about one one thirty or so. Um, so we went back down there. I think it was about 7 o'clock when we finally went back down. And she was having what they call singing. It's like a real bad um, grunting sound when you're trying to breathe. She pretty much could not breathe. And I was just sitting there watching her. I couldn't pick her up. I wanted to pick her up so badly. Um, I seriously was, I just was crying because I seriously felt like I was gonna lose her overnight. Like it was just the worst feeling. And I had a really hard time being down there and watching that and so we didn't stay for too long we stayed for about an hour or so and then we went back upstairs and they're like well you need to get your rest and stuff and I was also um, pumping and stuff I know that's a lot of information um, but I really really I was very motivated for breastfeeding because of her being premature I was like this is this is my number one goal now is to make sure that she gets this because I know this is very important for her and her development and stuff. And um, so I was dealing with that. Nothing was happening, of course, which is normal. They said, especially for women who have a C-section, doesn't usually come in until three days later. Um, and Daniel was able to stay in the room with me. Um, I was just really, really upset about the whole situation with her being premature. And so Daniel went down about 3 o'clock in the morning to see her. And he came back upstairs to tell me while I was pumping, because I was pumping every three hours. And he came back up to let me know that she was doing a lot better, that, that the singing had slowed down, she wasn't doing that as much. And um, that she just, yeah, she looked a lot better within within 12 hours she was already doing so much better so I was really really grateful for that um, and let's see I think it was around the early afternoon the next day we went down to hold her and stuff for the first time um, I don't think Daniel was there that day <sighs> trying to remember if he came back yeah I think he went I think he left that morning to go to, to work so he drove all the way back home to go to work everybody's like why are you at work you just had a baby yesterday and blah 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 um so but he had a lot of stuff that he had to get done and then he came back Friday he went ahead and took Friday off <laughs> um and let's see um, Thursday when I held her we did kangaroo care and stuff um, 
they weren't letting her eat yet because of her breathing. It was just really too hard for her. Um, and then Friday, Daniel came back and we got into the the place that we were that I was gonna stay in for the two weeks or so, which of course we didn't know how long we would be there at that point. Pretty much you, you just meet with them every Monday and you let them know how your baby is doing and they um, you decide on whether you need more time there and stuff. And um, so by the weekend they finally put a feeding tube in for her and they started feeding her formula. Um, that was Friday. And um, after I had held her and stuff again, they said that usually helps your milk come in and stuff. Then I went upstairs and I pumped and of course came came in just a little bit. Um, so we were getting we were getting those small syringes and stuff. And Daniel was so excited to be able to take those down for her and stuff. He was being a really good daddy. He was very excited. Um, He's like, my baby needs to make sure, we need to make sure she gets every drop. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, I know I get tired. Um, so by Saturday evening, he went ahead and he was, no, Friday evening, he went over and he stayed at the, the place that we were going to be staying because he was just really uncomfortable sleeping in the chair that they had there. He wasn't getting a good night's sleep. So as hard as it was for me not to have him there, I was like, yeah, you need to get your rest and stuff. So, and I went ahead and left Saturday by afternoon. Pretty much I only stayed because I wanted my lunch. It's like, I'm getting a hamburger for lunch. I want to stay so I can make sure I get my hamburger. Um, everybody's like, ew, you want cafeteria food? <laughs> Um, let's see, I think it was Sunday that they started, they started, um, giving her full-on breast milk through her feeding tube, because I was, I was producing a lot by then, um, by Saturday even, so mine came in within two days, which was great, and by Saturday I was already up and about, and, um, walking around. Daniel had went back home on Saturday again to get um, get more stuff for us since I was going to be away from home for a while. So he went and got his clothes and more stuff. And, um, so it was, I think by, the, by Monday they were having her try to breastfeed and stuff and see if she can get anything other than through the tube. And then by Wednesday, they took her off of the tube, which Daniel was no longer home. He had been off on Monday because of President's Day, or no, Memorial Day, sorry. Um, and so they took her off the feeding tube on Wednesday, and I didn't know about it until I got there. And um, I was kind of upset about it. I was like, well, why are you taking her off this tube? She's, is she really ready for it? And so there were letting her test on doing the, the full feeding of, um, like where, when she decides when she's hungry and stuff. So they were saying that she needs, she can decide when she's hungry, but she needs to eat within four hours. And pretty much they were only letting her take in like 50 cc's, but if she wanted more, it's like, why can't she have more, you know? Um, so, but they were saying that because she's using too much energy for it, and so she was having a lot of she was having a lot of diarrhea that day, and she was spitting up a lot. She was just having a really bad day, and I was just getting very emotional. Um, and then the guy came in because they they um, felt like they kept hearing a heart murmur, which I guess runs in Daniel's side of the family. Um, pretty much just it's just stopped his and like most people in his family from being in, on the track team you know um it's not really that big of a deal in his side of the family so but they wanted to check for that so they had a um ultrasound tech come in to do an ultrasound 
on her heart, which was really, really weird to watch and stuff. It's like, I, I thought at first it would be cool to see her heart. You know, I wasn't expecting anything else. And then he's looking at everything and I'm seeing this, a lot of red blurriness. And um, he looks at me and he's like, okay, well, because he was actually a doctor. So he was able to tell me right away. He didn't have to, he wasn't like a tech who had to wait for answers and stuff. Um, so he looked at me and he's like, well, um, her, her heart is at like 38%, I think it was. Um, and I think 30 was normal, something like that. I can't remember. Um, and he said, but she does have a small hole in her heart. And instantly when he said that my heart just dropped, I was like, oh my gosh. And I just started bawling. And he's like, but what that is, is that generally everyone who, um, Anyone who, like when they're first born, I guess, their first breath, it, it helps to close that hole in their heart. And I don't think she got that right away when she was, when they pulled her out. And the doctor said that uh, about 90% of us are born with a hole in our heart, a small hole in our heart like that. And he said that um, it doesn't always close up. So he's like about 90% of us adults are still walking around with a small hole in our hearts. And he said that if if they had done the same test on all of the babies in the NICU right now, which were about 16 at the time, that um, more than 50% of them would have a hole in their heart too. So that was, yeah, I was like, thank you for explaining all of that to me and not just, but he was very quick to explain right away instead of letting me like panic over that. You know, it's like, okay, she has a small hole in her heart, but this is what, you know. So I was really grateful that he explained it right away. Um, he said that he, he did not hear the murmur. He said that it's probably something that you can hear sometimes, but not all the time. And I told him, even when I was listening to her heart with my um, heart Doppler, I always felt like I was hearing something weird, you know. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, so that day was just a bad day. And we were only about five minutes away from the hospital where we were staying. My mother-in-law would stay the weekdays, and Daniel would stay on the weekends at that place. And she'd go home on the weekends. And so I had asked her if I could just go ahead and walk back to the house that we were staying at and um she's like yeah yeah I was like I just need some time alone and I cried the whole way home I was just like I need to just get it all out I yeah I was so emotional and having a hard time and, um and it was like it was just a bad day for her and to see her like that it was just really hard for me you know and I was I was feeling like she was just like she was doing so well the day before and then all of a sudden they take her off her feeding tube and she's just going down so the next day my mother-in-law decided she you know she took me out to the movie and she went out and bought me a couple shirts and a skirt because I was running out of clothes again and she's like you know she wanted to really help me feel better and she knew that I really needed to pick me up so we went out and saw Dark Shadows which was pretty pretty interesting movie <laughs> um and then we went, I mean, we didn't go to see Ava that much that day. Daniel's like, honey, it is okay for you not to be there 100% of the time. He's like, you need a break and you need to get away from watching those machines because those machines are just really stressing you out. He's like, you need to get rest. So, yeah. And I just really, really missed him. I wanted him to come back. So, um, but yeah, it was hard. Um, and so, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do a second half of this video too. <coughs> Sorry. All right, just one moment, okay. 